Okay, my wonderful friends, Roger once again, and we're going to be talking about supersymmetry, which is an extension of the standard model, which aims to fulfill some of the gaps in the standard model, which are significant. It predicts a partner particle, which they never saw before, for each particle in the standard model. So they say they got the standard model. These are the things they can see, but there has to be another one that they can't see. Theorists have come up with a mechanism to give the particles mass. They, could, they, they made up a whole bunch of stuff. Well, what about the standard model? What does the standard model predict? Well, guess what? Standard model does not explain gravity. It doesn't explain light, whether it's a particle or a wave. It doesn't explain gravity. It's, um, moreover, the standard model widely considered to be incompatible with the most successful theory of gravity to date, general relativity, which is not correct. Dark matter, they don't understand that either. Cosmological observations tell us the standard model explains about 5% of the energy present in the universe. They, it's, it really is totally insufficient because they want to get to the smallest particles that exist and I will show you those because they if we can get them out of light and see the particles in light I would say that's about as small as you're going to get okay so for sim supersymmetry to work you have to have a counter particle to every particle that we knew of and we know of light as being a particle that glows well guess what the counter particle to the light that glows is the dark particle. You see that? And this is, these are photons. And I can say that because here's what we discovered in the light research. This is the pulsed red laser. That particle I just showed you is right here. Now, when we created a Venturi that was tuned correctly, it sucked that particle out of the wave and <coughs> just like that, accelerated it, which light is not supposed to accelerate, and if that's a photon, which it was, it was accelerated, so we got a problem there with the current model, and of course it doesn't co co cover gravity or anything, I mean, let's just start over again. So supersymmetry says we've got a particle with an attached particle, yes, and that is the particle that just smashed into here, and it was this particle right here, and they were attached. And guess what? If you tune this Venturi correctly, it's a single slit, and a Venturi means a crusher device that tunes it to a, such a tiny little orifice that the, the actual atoms collide with each other. In this case, the photons collide with each other, and they actually separate it. And the separation is right here. I just showed you the particles, I showed you the concussion, and here is the concussion, here's the separation. The black particles separated from the white, because we have this tuned to a dimension that allows only the white to come through, and the white appears to be concussible, and the black appears not to be concussible. Let me show you what I mean by that. Here's the particle. All right, so there's a black and white particle. Now, this is the leading edge of the light going this way. Now, what's happening here? Look at this. This one is concussing with other little particles that are in the air, which are, are magnetic particles that are attached to gases and so forth. Gases, everything's made out of little magnetic particles. And we're bashing into them, so this begins to glow. These glow as because it's push to shove. And this is the powerful one, because it's coming like a rocket ship. That's why we can see it so well. These are just being concussed and get the hell out of the way, I'm coming through. Now, what is this? This is the dark matter. Now, this, you see the blue here? These are different, the different colors of radiation and different glows indicate different power or energy levels. Let's go with that. And this is the forward leading edge, and this is the concussive light particles. And I'll show you this a, a little more clear. But that's the structure. These are the attached particles. Nobody's ever seen them before. And you would never see them until we put this at the Venturi. They, they just do not show up. And in matter itself, 
the white particles want to be away from each other and and this is all pretty well understood and so they try to get away from each other that forces the white the black parts of them that are attached to them to sort of linger in the middle because they want everything to come together so the if for, when you get into atoms and this is a light so this is we're no, not even close to an atom one of those right here you need 1839 of them to make one hydrogen nucleus so they're pretty there's a lot of them in matter but in light there's just a few it's back back to back photons and they make a photon but when you surround all of an atom you will surround it with this white it will look basically like this all right instead of being an atom having a nucleus like one big giant proton for a hydrogen it has 1839 electrons and these would be the glowy parts of the electrons these would be these so we'd never be able to see inside to see the dark matter and this happens on every surface there is the white ones will always be coating the outside surface because they always want to be away from everybody else the black ones want to pull everybody else together. The black is always going to be the core of everything. It's like in having this, well, it's having like 1839 black ones inside of this, but in there, the white ones are all attached on the outside of the black ones. Let's just think of it that way. So you never see to the inside to see the black. That's the counterpart to the white, and that's the particle they've been missing right along. Okay, so this is what CERN wants to see, is the muon neutrino and the electron neutrino, which is the black ball and the white ball. And then when they concuss, which cre creates Cheryenkov radiation, the muon does not change, but the electron turns into a shower, exactly what I showed you, and here it is, right down here. Alright, so we're, we're seeing that event occur in real time. This is not a doodle. The other thing is just a, obviously a drawing. This is the real event occurring. This is the black muon separating from the electron shower. That's fission. This is when they come back together. That's fusion. So that really is like a miniature nuclear reactor. That's what all they do is they f create fission and then when the products come back together the heat is the fusion. This is an absolutely enormous increase in energetic value from the standard wave particle which is here. Hold on. This is just a standard single single light wave of red laser. And of course, we're picking it up as just as it's coming through the air. Now, what are we seeing happen? That's where the particle is. That's where there's a lot of concussion. So we can see there's a pretty good brightness there. And it creates, because it has a huge magnetic field surrounding it, it forces all these particles to be excited in their little glowiness. Because every single thing there is has a, electrons attached to it. All right, and some of them have extra electrons, and if you walk through the air and you pick up extra electrons in you, it collects it's what they call static electricity. Then you touch ground, pew, it goes right to ground. That's just excess electrons. These are electrons primarily that are gas molecules, oxygen and nitrogen and you know that sort of stuff, water molecules and such, you know, moisture in the air. No. This is the concussion. Remember I showed you before as the particle, just the f leading edge one shows up some little glowy bits. There it is right there. That's basically it. And then, of course, we accelerated it. And light is a spinning particle. I showed you it's a particle. And it spins. I got it somewhere down here. All right. This is, this is you can see it spins. All right, that's a drill bit basically, and this is single slit, so we don't have, you know, flappy waves going this way and that way, and you know it's all pretty well understood now. Um, if it's looked at, I think it could be understood. Let me put it that way. I I understand it. I think, and um, I think other people could understand it as well if they look at it. Okay, just to recap, you remember we had the red laser, pulsed, accelerated the particles divided, they came back together. That's the venturi right here. It looks something like that. 
the particle waves all crushed together and they were these little particles when they came out the other side pure whiteness that increases the energetic value by 200 times supposedly and here's the actual physical photos that we took as it happened there's the light just normal not accelerating but exciting all the particles that are in front of it because of its magnetic influence here it's accelerating very very fast and exploding at the venturi creating all of this very extreme extreme energetic reaction violent like an explosion this spray of particles is coming at us here they call these higgs fields the particle that we spoke of that i have been speaking of is the photon and that's it and it appears that two fo two electrons which is one of these and the other one back to back just exactly like bar magnets which i say are particles that is not simply a wave that's a particle it impacts and it, it is a particle and um it consists of the muon and the electron shower. Now, we always just always never realized there was anything other than the electron. We can see the glow. We know that the glows are coming out. So, yeah, that's the electron bouncing back. Yeah. Well, guess what? The dark matter is attached to it. We could never see that before. The only way we could see it was because of the experiment, forcing it to, to manifest itself and show it as this box of particles and then of course they just separated at the venturi all right i think i've shown some evidence for supersymmetry if you saw that black and white and the black and white attached together which is light they separated they came back together so they want to be together it appears that the black and the white are supersymmetrical and the black has never ever 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 been seen before except at cern and they didn't know what to make of it so we saw it come from light and go back into light particles. Now, to date, no evidence for supersymmetry has been found. So, far, so therefore, the experiments at the Large Hadron Collider have ruled out the simplest supersymmetric models. Well, mine is the most simple of all supersymmetric models. Everything's made of electrons. There's a positive side and a negative side. We can only see the negative side, which glows back at us when we excite it. The dark side pulls everything back together. End of story. All right, this is the problem. Now they're all, we're going to have to look somewhere else because supersymmetry fails the test. Well, I don't think it failed. I think it passed the test. I think you failed the test by not being able to look at what was presented. Now, I'm trying to get this, to, to show this to Don Lincoln. I know he's very busy, but um, I think just a couple of minutes to watch this video would be, you know, he's a government employee, and I said we're paying a lot of money for doing their research. I think I have some ideas that might help. Um, my point is, we need to get this at least looked at by somebody. So I need somebody to contact me from a research institution or something. It, what, what I just showed you, it just because it's not peer-reviewed and it's not it's written in some scientific lingo, you know, that's, that's, that's meaningless. And that's all I ever get. Oh, you have to go get peer-reviewed. You have to put it in a published journal and then we all have to look at it and agree you're right before we'll even talk to you. And that's exactly what Don Lincoln told me. He said, I won't spend one minute looking at this until you do all those things. I said, holy smokes, that's just not right, man. Anyway, I'm going to leave it at that. And I hope somebody will take a chance to take a minute to look at it. I think I showed some pretty good evidence of exactly what supersymmetry is and exactly what the muon is and the electron showers and all of that stuff. So, and I think I can make energy for free. When you see that explosion that happened, let me just, let's just look at that one more time because there's free energy in the offing here. All right, I think we can get free energy. We're increasing the value of this exponentially. Right here, we should be able to harvest this energy with some kind of a, a capture device here, a thin film transition metal receiver that sends that electricity down to um, batteries or whatever to go immediately be used and then feed some back here to keep the reaction going but you can see the increased value of energy is absolutely enormous they say 200 times i'll go along with that 
No, I'm just going to brag, because I'm going to brag. I did this my whole life, and and not only did I do it in theory and understand the thermochemistry and resonance, all of this is about bonding and about all of the different ways that magnetic properties, dipoles, dipole moments, how everything bonds and interacts with each other, all the different, I can go, and this goes, this is, there's a lot of pages here. So I could go through them all if you want, but I'm not going to bother. But I got to a point where I realized that 100% of everything was electrons. And and a light, is, I called it uh, electronic vapor, somewhere in here I've got it written on. Yeah, transfer of energy from light to atomic vapor. All right, and then I studied all the different light, I studied everything. I did all the labs. I did all the calorimeters, I did all the stuff. So if somebody wants to contest the things that I'm saying, and I'm going to tell you right now, when you go into the labs and you do all the understanding of the different acids and salts and how they dissipate their energy and how they absorb energy, it always comes out to the last thing is always 100% of the time electric power. All power is electric. I don't care whether they're doing this, that's electric. Because you're scrubbing electrons against electrons. That's electric. I don't care what it is. Every single thing that there is, is electric power. And now I'm going to show you how I did lead my life. Because once I found out that nobody cared about the truth in academia, I said, to hell with you people. I'm going to go out. And I did. And I did a good job. And then I started my own business. I was very successful. So it's time for me to brag. And then you show me what you people did. All you people have been doing is walking around in circles. Oh, 20, 30, 40, 50 years of looking for something, never finding it. And refusing to spend one minute to look.